Good morning, First English Lutheran Church and friends. It is so good to be with you this morning as we gather for worship. Thank you for being here, whether you are joining us on the radio, whether you are on YouTube, or whether you are going to be joining us on the West Lawn or doing a couple of those. We are glad that you are worshiping with us. Again, today we will be celebrating Holy Communion, so when we get to that point, um, you can gather with us at the table. So if you would have bread or crackers, wine, or some kind of juice um, ready for that time in the service, that would be great. Again, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, I think those are all my announcements for our life together. And we are glad that you are here and continue to be together in these moments in this time. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. For mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our opening hymn, number 689, Praise and Thanksgiving. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Glorious God, you join us waters, water the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken us hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah. Ho, oh, everyone, lo, everyone who thirst, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for which is not bread, and you labor for that which it does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, come to me, listen so that you will live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness of the people, a leader and commander for all the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Today comes from Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. I have to admit that when I first read this gospel a couple weeks ago, I was like, oh, it's the loaves and the fishes again. How many times do we have to hear this story about the loaves and the fishes? Well, then I started kind of parsing this story out a bit. And I thought to myself, so how have I thought about this story in the past? Who have I been in this story in the past? Well, I certainly have been the disciples in the past and talked about, you know, looking at the world through the eyes of scarcity. This is all we got. We got to hold on to it tight. It's not enough for everybody. And Jesus says, but wait a minute, hold everything, bring it to me. I've certainly been the little boy 
who we say, tradition has, had the loaves and the fishes, where like, what I have to offer isn't very much, but when it's put together with everything else, it becomes more than sufficient, and so what I have to offer is enough. There's times also when I've been Jesus in this story, when I've just been completely and totally exhausted. And all I want to do is go to my cave, wherever that is, be by myself with my knitting needles and a cup of tea, and uh, just leave the world out there. I'll deal with it tomorrow. And yet, then the phone rings. And you're like, yep, I'm on duty again. I've certainly been there. But truth be told, I have never thought of myself as one of the sea of 5,000 men, plus the women and children. So we can say there was, say, two people for every man, so, you know, there was probably 15,000 people there. I certainly have never thought of myself as one of those faces, those faceless people out there in the crowds. So I started thinking about this story from that perspective, this year in particular. I believe that we are part of that sea of 15,000 people. And all we want, if truth be told, all we want is for Jesus to look at us with We want Jesus to look at us individually or even as part of the crowd and go, wow, you all need some healing. Whether that be of mind, body, or spirit, it is true for each of us. We don't live in wholeness. We don't live as healthy, well people because we're not. And the idea of Jesus looking at this vast sea of faceless faces before him and to look at each one of them with compassion. You know, in these days when we are socially distancing or physically distancing, my preference, we are sheltering at home. We're creating a bubble of people around us that we feel safe with. I want Jesus to look at us with compassion. A week ago or so, I hadn't heard from a friend of mine, so I sent him a little note saying, I haven't heard from you, how are things going? His response was, well, I'm in the hospital, I have COVID. You could have blown me over with a feather. It was like a sucker punch right in my solar plexus. Because he isn't one I would have thought would have been so affected by this disease. He's out of the hospital now. I checked with him this week and said, so how are you doing? He said, I don't think I'm improving much. And then he said this statement, I am just trying to survive. Well, if that doesn't catch your breath and cause tear to come to your eye, nothing ever will when you hear that from someone you love and don't. I want Jesus to look into his face with compassion. And for my friend who is so angry at this disease because it's causing her to change her life and she can't be with the ones that she loves because they don't live the same way she does. And she is immunocompromised and she is just darn right angry. I want Jesus to look into her face with compassion. And for my friend that I saw yesterday when I was walking the dog, 
who I hadn't seen for months. He looked great. I said, how are you doing? He goes, well, he had a heart valve replacement a week ago. I want Jesus to look into his face with compassion. And for all those of you out there, who can't even see to next Wednesday, let alone to when school is supposed to open, to Thanksgiving and Christmas, which will probably be altered, to all of you for whom the next step is unknown. I want Jesus to look into your face with compassion. And selfishly, I want Jesus to look at me that same way. We do live in uncertain times, and it does kind of feel like we just have a couple of fish and some loaves of bread, enough to make two and a half sandwiches, to be perfectly honest, if you use two pieces of bread. It's not a lot. But you know what? It's enough. It is enough because Jesus does look at each one of us with compassion and when Jesus looks at each of us eye to eye mask or no mask Jesus looks at us and says you are healed. You are whole. You are enough. You have enough. And I will come to you with a divine surprise as I look upon you with compassion. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 515, Break Now the Bread of Life. Continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your Church trust that, we, that what you bless and ask of us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rains in places of drought, and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, you offer yourself to all nations and the peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in the suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all we encounter. And today we remember our friends Pierce, Ellie, Dave, Gwendolyn, and those we name either outside loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, you gather your saints as one, united in the body of Christ. Bring us with your saints to the heavenly banquet. Remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known, Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Okay, I'm going to try this. Is this going to work with my mask on, Ryan? Yeah, this is going to come off. Okay. We now are preparing our hearts and our minds for the gift of the meal. If you are at home and joining us, I would invite you to get your cracker or bread and your wine or juice ready um, for that time when we will share the meal together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night, in which he, the night before he died, our Lord and Savior took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and you are all welcome here. For the gifts of God are free. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, give you strength and peace today and into your life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, so that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 542, O Living Bread from Heaven. We'll sing verses 1 and 4.
the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.